Sunrise. And at 6 o'clock, we begin with breaking news this morning. It is icy on the roads. That's a live picture from Hillsboro at Cornelius Pass Road and Northeast Cherry Drive. At least three cars have slid off the road. Photographer Eric Patterson is at the scene this morning. Eric, tell us what you know about these wrecks. Well, this one in particular that you're looking at right now, uh, the car and utility truck, the, the utility truck, I was, I'm told by Hillsboro police that was involved with this passenger vehicle in sliding off the road. They're getting ready to move it right now. And uh, uh, they also tell me that this crash was a, a non-injury crash, so that's good news. But it is still very, very icy out here. And uh, thank goodness people are keeping their speeds down. Oh, absolutely. Okay, photographer Eric Patterson, I know you're going to stay on this and other situations. We'll be checking back throughout the morning. Right now, though, we want to check traffic with Lacey Evans. You have another trouble spot. Yes, up on Highway 30 west of Rainier, there is a crash there uh, again, possibly due to icy conditions and a little closer to where Eric is on TV Highway just west of Milliken. We have a crash reported there as well. So very slick over on the west side in the outlying areas. Want to uh, tell you that this right lane of I-84 eastbound at 28th is still blocked due to that stall. And then down on 99W, three miles south of Newburgh, that highway is closed in both directions due to a vehicle fire, but still mm. getting reports of slick wow. roads in that area. Okay, for sure. Lacey, thank you. We have some issues out in the coast range too with snow there. Now the Vernonia School District is on a two hour late start. So Rod's been on this for us uh, since the morning began. It's we, cold. Know it's, we know it's cold in Vernonia <laughs> for sure. Where yeah. else is it really yeah. cold right now? Well, the, the icy box spot is out where Eric Patterson was that uh, Washington County area, Yamhill County. We also have a pocket of freezing temperatures down around Albany this morning. Good visibility coming in the city. The shower activity is mainly in the mountains where it is snowing down uh, just above 1200 feet at this point. Here are the uh, early morning numbers, 36 battleground, but look at uh, in Be Forest Grove, 33. Hillsboro has been reporting 32 degrees this morning. Um, so that's our big story. The freezing temperatures setting up icy spots on roadways at the bus stop, mid thirties out the door should all be dry by lunchtime and it turns in to a nice day with partly cloudy skies and temperatures warming into the forties. Here's the radar and again, see the white there's snow over highway 26. And we have the snow continuing up on Mount Hood. No problems that I know of in the gorge down low along I-84. All temperatures are above freezing this morning. All right, Rod, thanks a lot. 603, of course, we had a lot of weather over the weekend, too. Big windstorm that came through the metro area. And the cleanup continues this morning after that storm. This is a live look in Tualatin right now, where you can see that massive tree there wow. fell on top of several parked cars. This is at the London Point apartment complex off Southwest Tualatin and Herman Roads. So residents there say when that tree came down Saturday night, it sounded like a semi crashed into the building. Also throughout the metro area that night, several power lines came down. And at one point there were more than 100,000 people that had no electricity. We will keep track of this and bring you the latest. You can find more information right now on our website, KGW.com. You can also check out our mobile app. It is 604 now. We are expecting to learn the name of the officer who shot and killed a man in southeast Portland. It happened yesterday afternoon afternoon when police say a man refused to leave an apartment near Market Street and 96th Avenue. Police haven't said exactly what happened, except that the officer arrived alone and fired his gun, hitting the man. That man later died at the hospital. Officers have not said if the man had a weapon or if he lived at the apartment complex. Well, as we enter week three of the partial government shutdown, President Trump says he's expecting progress in the next few days. Yeah, but we also have more federal agencies running out of reserve funding, so the shutdown could keep millions of Americans from getting their tax refunds. NBC's Tracy Potts is tracking the latest from Capitol Hill. Parts of the federal government remain closed this morning. We'll see what happens. We'll see whether or not it's settled. President Trump's predicting progress by Wednesday after weekend negotiations brought no breakthrough. We need to open up government and then negotiate, not the other way around. The president and Democrats are at odds over whether Americans should pay for a wall at the Mexico border. We were trying to do our best to get the, the, the government open before it became a serious issue. Democrats are now pressing the administration to justify the $5.6 billion the president's asking for as he threatens to declare a national emergency to pay for the wall 
The White House insists he is compromising, agreeing to steel instead of concrete. A concrete barrier is not going but, to but, but automatically Democrats stop have... people from coming. We need to look at more border patrol agents, technology and other means as well. Democrats say they're hearing no compromise on the cost. In a pound the table way, unless I get it my way, I'm going to hurt all these people. That is not the way to go. If this shutdown continues, the IRS may be forced to delay tax refunds. Think about the hundreds of thousands of people who will be entitled to income tax refund checks who won't receive them. Moving this debate from national parks to the wallets of millions of Americans. Now, if the president declares a national emergency to build the wall, that will almost surely prompt a legal challenge. Moving this entire debate from the White House to the courts. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. The Today Show is following the latest on negotiations to end the government shutdown. They're gonna have more coming up at seven o'clock right here after sunrise. It is 6.06, time for some more news headlines in your morning rush. Actor Kevin Spacey is due in court today, facing a felony charge of indecent assault and battery against an 18-year-old man. It allegedly happened at a restaurant in Massachusetts in the summer of 2016. The judge denied a request from Spacey's attorney that the actor not be physically present in the courtroom. He's expected to plead not guilty. Houston police took a man into custody in connection with the shooting death of a seven-year-old girl. Jasmine Barnes was killed in a drive-by shooting on December 30th. Eric Black Jr. was arrested Saturday. Officials say Black admitted driving the car during the shooting, but says he was with somebody else. He says that person was the one who shot at the car. President Trump's national security advisor hinted the U.S. will delay withdrawing troops from Syria. During a visit to Israel yesterday, John Bolton discussed Syria and other security issues with the Israeli Prime Minister. Bolton says U.S. troops will not leave Syria until ISIS is defeated and U.S. allies are protected. David Rhodes announced he will step down as president of CBS News after eight years. 48 Hours producer Susan Zerinsky will replace him in March, making her the first woman to lead the network's news division. Rhodes says he'll work as an advisor to CBS News after stepping down. And trade talks between the U.S. and China are expected to begin today. The meeting comes amid rising concerns that trade tensions will impact the global economy. In light of that, China is making some moves, including buying more U.S. soybeans and a commitment to import more U.S. rice. And that's a look at your morning rush. Thank you to Freddie Mercury for giving me the joy of a lifetime. Oh yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody, a big <laughs> winner last night at the Golden Globes. In fact, it took home the top prize. The music biopic won Best Drama. Okay, so that win is considered an upset. A lot of people were thinking um, A Star is Born would take it, but that's not the only surprise. Dark Horse nominee Glenn Close won Best Actress for her performance in The Wife. That's just a small portion of the action. We are going to recap the Golden Globes throughout the morning. We will have a live report coming up around 6.45, and the Today Show continues our coverage starting at 7. Okay, that's the fun stuff.